What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the first part of a story where Izuku became the ultimate spinjitsu master. Izuku Midoriya was chosen to be All Might's successor. During his sixth month of training, as Izuku walked back from home school, he noticed a group of people jumping from building to building, thinking they were villains Izuku followed them into a dark alley, only for him to find out the group of people were people around his age and were ninjas. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations. Now, let's get into part 1. Planet Earth, birthplace of the human race, where about 80% of population are given mysterious powers called a quirk. In this vast world there is a boy, and that boy is Izuku Midoriya, and his dream is to be a hero. He only had one problem. With 80% of the population being born with these powers, the remaining 20% were born with no powers and were deemed quirkless, unfortunately Izuku was unlucky enough to be born with the remaining 20%. Because of that, Izuku had suffered about his whole life starting from four years old. All of Izuku's school life, the poor boy was bullied for just being quirkless. No one bullied him more than his former childhood friend and now tormentor, Katsuki Bakugo, who made Izuku's life a living hell. Katsuki bullied Izuku so much that the boy's psychological worse. Bakugo also nicknamed Izuku the name Deku, which means useless, weak, defenseless, and other bad things. But you know what they say, where there is darkness, there will always be light. Even when he was knocked down or got beaten up, Izuku always got back up and never gave his dream of being a hero. Why? The most obvious reason being, and I think all of you MA fans know, the current number one hero of Japan. All Might. For as long as Izuku can remember, he's been a fan of All Might for his whole life. Izuku is such a fan that he watches All Might's debut video about how he saved about 100 people in less than 10 minutes. You could say that Izuku was All Might's number one fan. The other reason being that he was never unhappy when he was with his family, with the parents being Inko and Hisashi Midoriya, even though their son was born quirkless, Izuku's parents always supported him and his dream of being a hero, especially his dad. If Hisashi was a hero, he would be Izuku's number one hero fan pretty easily. That was until, a tragedy that would change the Midoriya family forever. Hisashi Midoriya's death. Because of Hisashi's death, it affected the Midoriya family, the one who was most effective was Izuku. It was very hard and painful for him to process. But that still didn't mean Izuku was giving up his dream and decided to not cry, because that's not what his dad wouldn't want. Since then, sometimes Izuku would exercise at the house. Sure it was hard at first, but he got some muscle out of it. But little did Izuku know, once he was 14 years old, his life would change for the better, but also for the worse. After finishing another at his hell Izuku call school, receiving advice to kill himself by Bakugo, meeting All Might after saving him from a sludge villain who tried to kill our poor protagonist, and being scolded by a bunch of pro heroes, at the end of the day, Izuku was blessed. All Might, who said earlier that Izuku couldn't be a hero without a quirk, saw that same boy spring into action to save Bakugo, and regretted for what he had said. A few minutes later, as the hero found the protagonist, he said with the following phrases. Young man. You too can become a hero. That one sentence made Izuku's heart rejoice, and made the boy burst into tears of happiness. That's because the only other person that told Izuku he could be a hero was his father, and now seeing his own idol saying those exact same words made the boy very happy. And it was from that day on, All Might Toshinori Yagi chose Izuku Midoriya as his successor for his quirk. But in order for Izuku to inherit the quirk, he would have to go through 10 months of training to pass one for all onto him. All of this happened before the entrance exam for UA High, the hero school that Izuku Midoriya wanted to apply to. Little did Izuku and the rest of the world knew that this wasn't the icing on the cake. You see, in this world, there were also five ninjas who have faced evil before, but this type of evil had no intentions with the world. This evil would soon come to Japan, and these five ninjas came to stop that evil before it was too late. Now back to our protagonist, it's been about six months since Izuku started his hellish training. I mean, he did have to clean an entire beach which was full of garbage. It would have been worse if Izuku was the way he used to be, well, skinny. But because of the training he did back home and with All Might, the training was less terrible than it would have been. But still, on one hand it made Izuku tired, on the other hand, it was good, mostly because his physique was very much better compared to six months ago. Anyway, the sun was shining in Musatafu. To be specific it was 3.15. Izuku had just left Aldera Middle School. Inko insisted on picking him up since she was worried about him very much, but Izuku insisted, telling her that it would do him good to walk some more. It was partially true. Izuku really wanted to do this because he wanted to some more feet and leg exercises and see how much he's improved. Izuku? Wow. I can't believe. 
usually Kakan and his friends try to find me after school so they can beat me up and saying how I'll never be a hero. Izuku just ignored it and continued to walk home. Izuku. It's been about six months since All Might chose me as his successor. But still, to able to wield All Might's power, if I am gonna wield All Might's quirk, I have to improve my my physique and more. I understand it, but I didn't think this workout was going to be this hard and painful. Well, on the bright side, it's showing positive results. I've gotten a little stronger than before, still though, I have to improve if I want to be a hero. So that I'll be able to save people with a smile on my face, just like All Might's and just like. Izuku stopped walking as suddenly remembered a person just like you dad. Izuku then grew a sad smile on his face. Even though it had been 8 years since his father's death, it still messed with him pretty good. But Izuku didn't let that shake him easily. He then got a determined face as he clenched his right fist while looking at it. Izuku. I'm gonna make it. The boy said with a smile. As Izuku continued to walk, he saw something just out of the corner of his eye that was suspicious. He saw what appeared to be a shadowy figure of a man on top of a roof. Izuku. What's that guy doing? Izuku slowing and quickly his behind a trash bin nearby. As the man was analyzing his surroundings completely missing the boy, he then turned the other way and gave some sort signal. Izuku was confused by this at first, but soon realized as something else came out of the shadows. Izuku now saw not one, not two, but five people on the rooftop. The boy was not only shocked but also intrigued, mostly because these people were able sneak into the shadows in broad daylight. When the first man pointed somewhere in the city and soon ran, the other four people ran as well, jumping from building to building. Izuku. What was that? Who were those people? Is it some kind of mini convention or something else? No wait. If it was, why would they leave so fast? Are they villains? I better take a closer look. Izuku ran behind the shadow people who were jumping from each building to the next for a few minutes, eventually, Izuku unfortunately lost the shadow people due to him stopping and taking a deep breath. Izuku. Damn it, deep breath lost them. Izuku was taking deep breaths when he saw another group of people, this time looking like smugglers as they went inside an alley. Izuku was choosing either to try to find the shadow people again, or to go in the dark creepy alley, and in the most silent way possible, the boy entered the alley. Izuku. I'll find those shadow people later. Izuku knew doing this would be very risky. If those people in the alley were actual villains and caught Izuku, what could he do? And if they weren't, then how would he know? Izuku just wanted to be sure, especially this neighborhood since he and his mother live close by. Izuku went deeper into the alley, but in order not to be seen and risk making a single sound, the boy hides and leans against the corner of a garbage dump and sticks his head out to see what these people were up to. He saw that group of people carrying some boxes and putting them in the back of a truck. But one of the people couldn't find the balance to hold the box and dropped. Letting Izuku see what was in the box. It appeared to be boxes of grayish black block with yellow cracks on them. Izuku. What is that? His attention was stolen by a loud banging sound that came from inside the truck. Inside the truck, some sort of man cybered came out, with some kind of robotic eye patch over his left eye with a top hat. He had a robot arm on his left side, and he wore a red trench coat underneath you could see he had a bunch of robotic parts on him. He had a piece of facial hair on each side of his mouth. This held a serious face showing his golden teeth, which made Izuku both intimidated and cringed a bit. Hey. Be careful newbie smuggler. Eh sorry, sir. The smuggler looked to be a rookie, who then bowed as a sign of both forgiveness and mercy. You're lucky you didn't break this, especially since the boss wasn't here. Otherwise you'd be dead about right here and now. The cybered man said with a cocky voice, which made the smuggler shake a bit, now do your job right by taking this and put everything in the truck. Now. Without another word, the smuggler did what the cybered told him to do. He just took the vial and put it back in the truck. Now, Izuku didn't have any doubts anymore, these people were too suspicious. Izuku. Uh oh. I have to call the police or call a hero. Maybe All Might can help. While he was in desperation of trying to get his phone, Izuku accidentally dropped it, which caused a noise. Izuku. Damn it. Izuku was sweating as if he finished a marathon. He then heard someone approaching his location. From the sound of the person walking towards the boy and the sound of dial turning, he was pretty sure it was the cybered person who was walking to Izuku. He wanted to just run, but his fear was too much that he felt as if he was completely paralyzed of fear. Izuku was sure he was going to get caught and killed. That was until. Sir, look. One of the smugglers pointed to the top of a building, everyone, including Izuku, saw five silhouettes up there, while Izuku was shocked it was them from earlier. Izuku. It's them, the shadow people. One of the silhouettes was man with a black and red outfit, he wore a mask, so that no one could see what he'd look like. 
In addition, he had a sword wielding on his back. He also had black shoulder panels for armor. His name was Kai Smith. The other man wore the same outfit, but only the red was now in blue. He also had a pair of nunchucks. His name was Jay Walker. The third person was wearing just like the first two, the exact same outfit but in white. This person wielded a pair of throwing star shurikens. What most weird about is that if you took a closer look at his mask, you could see some kind of weird glowing eye patch on his left eye, just like the cybered person's but smaller. His name was Zane Julian. The fourth person was wearing the same outfit as the other three, but with a grayish black color. This person was holding a giant hammer in his arms. In his mask, you could also see that he has very bushy eyebrows. His name was Cole Brookstone. The last person was. Actually. Very very different from the others. First off, the last person was a girl due to her suit being a different body type. Second of all, her suit wasn't the same color as the boys. Her suit was pretty colorful with red violet and an aqua blue with golden shoulder plates for armor. She was also holding a trident. This was Kai's little sister Nia Smith. These are the ninjas of Ninjago, and they have their eyes on the smugglers. Izuku. Who are they? Izuku already knew they were the shadow people from earlier, but he still couldn't see who they really were, but something in his gut told him that they weren't a threat to him. Oh you've got to be kidding me not again. Ugh, what are you just standing around for, get them. The cybered man said as he went back inside the truck while the smugglers took out their own weapons to attack with. The ninja jumped off the building and landed on the ground. And with that, the smugglers ran towards the ninja, and the ninja ran towards the smugglers without taking out their weapons. Jay jumped up and shocked one of the smugglers with his foot, as soon as his feet landed Jay started to spin until you could blue particles flowing around him. Jay. Ninja go. Just then a blue little tornado appeared right below and consumed him, but soon moved towards the smugglers who sucked in the tornado. This was not only Izuku's first time seeing this, but this was also Jay's spinjitsu. Once Jay finished his spinjitsu, another smuggler tried to strike him with his knife, but couldn't do Cole grabbing his arm and spinning him, thus performing Cole's spinjitsu. Once Cole was done with his spinjitsu his attention went to another smuggler who tried to attack with an axe, but dodged the swing, and thanks to Cole's super strength, he punched the smuggler so hard in the stomach that he went into the wall before falling, leaving a really cracked wall. But before he could fall, Cole grabbed him. Cole. Jay. Jay. Let's do this. Jay pulled out his nunchucks, then spinning them before, Cole rammed the smuggler's head straight at the nunchucks, while Jay hit his nunchucks right on the smuggler's head, before knocking him unconscious. Cole J. Alright the two clapped their hands together before separating them to fight more smugglers. I and Nia were both dodging with not that much difficulty, a smuggler that was attacking with a scythe, until Kai hit the smuggler's hand, making him drop the scythe, just then, the smuggler's face was grabbed and was soon engulfed in a flaming tornado. Another smuggler went behind him, trying to secure the red ninja with a chain, but Nia saw this and threw her trident at the chain, so that the chain would be ineffective. After this, she runs up to the smuggler. Once she arrives, Nia grabs the chain and does her spinjitsu, making the smuggler go towards the tornado. Nia. Don't underestimate what a girl can really do to you. Nia said in her native language as she finished spinjitsu and grabbed her trident from the chain. As Zane dodged a katana, he kicked the smuggler that tried to attack him and ran towards him while summoning his spinjitsu. As he finished his spinjitsu, Zane heard the truck starting, there wasn't a way they could follow the truck without being seen. Plus, the ninja were still busy dealing with the smugglers. But since Zane was incredibly intelligent, he threw a tracker that looked like a shuriken behind the vehicle. Causing it to stick to the back of the truck. What Zane didn't know was that a smuggler was advancing towards him with a knife pointed at him, but Izuku saw it. Izuku. Hey, look out behind you. Zane. Huh. Zane could have sworn he heard another voice that wasn't his friend's voice, telling him to watch out behind him. However, in Zane's eyes you could see a blue see-through screen with two signs containing a red caution sign and a U-turn sign. He put that aside when he suddenly jumped and the smuggler missed. To the smuggler and Izuku's surprise, Zane's feet hit the ground and turned around. Zane. Really? Zane said smugly before he scowled at the smuggler, before freezing his whole body but his face and punching him in the face, causing the smuggler to fall flat on his back. If you haven't noticed already, I'm an android. You should study your opponent some more. He said before moving on to the next smuggler. As the ninja got next to each other, they decided to end it right here right now, and use spinjitsu with only 8 smugglers. The ninja. Ninja go. As the ninja used spinjitsu all at once, the smugglers were getting sucked in one by one, leaving only 4 smugglers left. Once they finished spinjitsu, Cole kicked a smuggler in the stomach, causing his opponent to stop to breathe right, but didn't have time to think, as Cole threw him with his super strength, causing the smuggler to crash into the wall. 
Zane used his shurikens to defend himself from the attacks from the smuggler, who attacked him with his sledgehammer, until Zane shot one of his shurikens at the smuggler's foot, making him scream in pain. Zane took advantage from this and froze the smuggler, then punched him multiple times and gave one final kick to the head. Bazuku. Wow, they're amazing. He said with a look of both amazement and shock as he saw the five ninja gathering to the last smuggler, who happened to be the rookie smuggler. Rookie smuggler? S stay away from me you weirdos. The smuggler ran towards them with a knife in his hands to attack them until Cole stopped the blow by gripping on the rookie's arm tightly, making him drop the weapon. Cole then pushed him to the ground. Lying on the ground, the rookie kept crawling away from the ninja until he felt a wall behind his back. Cole. Listen and listen good. If you don't want anything bad to happen to you, then tell us what we want to know. Rookie smuggler? I I won't tell you anything. Even though he said it, it was pretty obvious by everyone that he was afraid. Cole. Okay then. We can either do this the easy way, or Kai's way. He said while pointing to Kai, who hit his hand on his fist with a little flame appearing on his fist. Zane. Believe me on this, you do not want to do it Kai's way. Zane said as a signal for the smuggler to talk. Hi. Tell us. Where's the overlord? Where is he hiding? What's in that truck? And why is he and the Crystal Council here? He said while getting a little impatient. Brokey smuggler? L look, I I joined this council only a little time ago. So I really don't know that much. Hi. You better not lie to us and not waste our time you little. Kai was about to go for the smuggler until Cole grabbed his shoulder as a sign of. Don't worry, I got this. And Kai obeyed, even though he was a bit reluctant. Cole. Just tell us what you do know. Brokey smuggler? Okay, all I know is that the Crystal Council left Ninjago to come here because they made an alliance with another group of villains. Izuku. A group of villains. Izuku was listening very carefully, so much that he left his hiding spot. Cole. So who is this group of villains? Who are they M? And where is the Overlord? Rookie Smuggler. Look like I said, I joined not too long ago. I was just a normal thug, that's all. Hi. Just tell us what we want to know. He was starting to lose patience. So much that his hands ignited in flames, making the rookie scared. Rookie smuggler? A all I know is that the group is called. The League of Villains. Look, I swear I don't know where the Overlord is, or why they're working together or what they're up to. This is just my first job, I didn't think I'd ever be in this situation. I swear on my life that's all I know. The smuggler was hoping not to receive a blow as he put his hands in front of him. Cole. Does anyone know who is this League of Villains? Cole asked his friends. Zane. I do not know, but I can look them up on my database on the bounty. There must be something related to them we can find. Jay. Uh guys. Other than Nia who got his attention, Jay was trying to get his friend's attention, but. Hi. Well whoever it is, let's find them and finish this. He said as he hit his hand on his fist. Nia. Guys. Cole. Kai, just think about it. If the Crystal Council left Ninjago to join alongside this league of villains, then these guys can be heavy load. Maybe the toughest bad guys we've ever faced. Which is why we can't underestimate them. He said as he thinks about what to do. Zane. Cole is correct. We should be extremely careful if we run into any of them. If the Overlord has made an alliance with this group together, they can be the toughest villains we've ever fought. Jania. Guys. They raised their voices a bit more, but. Hi. Okay okay fine. We'll beat them in the face anyway, just like we always have. Zane. That is if we don't get caught and alert the heroes and don't draw attention to ourselves. Cole. That, and something else Kai. Remember what Master Wu always says. Cole Kai. Never put off tomorrow for what can be done today. Hi. I know Cole. I still remember all the times that I didn't do something the first time around. He said well he remembers all the times he didn't do something the first time around. Even more when he trained with Wu. Jania. Guys. Cole Kai Zane. What is it you two? Jay. We have a problem over here. Cole. What kind of problem? Nia. See for yourself. As Jay and Nia turned and looked at one direction slowly, the others looked at where Jay and Nia were looking, they then turned pale. They saw Izuku standing there looking at them, with a surprised look on his face. Izuku. Wow. Izuku now has a better view of who they were. At first he was just shocked, but as soon as he saw what they did, he just let it go. Zane. Calm down little one. There is no need to panic. We don't mean you harm. He said while putting his hands in the air to the boy, as a sign that they weren't going to hurt him. But unfortunately for them, Izuku was thinking differently. Izuku. That. Was. Amazing. Izuku had soon entered his fanboy mode, while the ninja were surprised. Cole. What did you just say kid? Izuku. You were amazing. 
The way you all fraught cooperated as a team was awesome. Are you a new hero group what kind of quirks do you have? Izuku thought the ninja were all like that because of their quirks. But. Jay. What's a quirk? Jay whispered to Zane. Zane. I believe he's referring to the superpowers that have been having these days. Zane whispered to Jay. They were speaking in English so that Izuku didn't understand what they were saying. But unbeknownst to them, Izuku heard and understood what they were saying the entire time. Izuku was studious and intelligent person, so that he can understand the English language. Izuku. Wait, you're saying you're not like this because of quirks. His question made Cole, Kai, Zane, and Nia shocked on how the boy understood them. Until Kai decided to act out. Hi. Um, well. Jay. We don't have quirks why? Ow. Kai and Zane hit Jay on the head, while Cole hits his hand on his face. Nia. Jay. Jay. What, I'm just being honest. He said while rubbing the back of his head. Izuku was in pure shock. He'd seen many quirks where the person was able to summon or control different types of elements. He thought the five ninja had that type of quirk. But to his surprise, they weren't even quirks at all. Cole saw Izuku's face of shock and became a bit worried. Cole. Hey kid, you okay? He said while waving his hand on Izuku's face. Izuku didn't say anything. The state of shock was too much that he fell on the floor hard, passing out. Which worried the ninja very much. Cole. Whoa, whoa. Kid wake up. He said while shaking the boy's shoulders. Hi. Look what you did Jay. Jay. I'm sorry I didn't mean to. He said while shedding some comical tears. Zane. Scanning him his vitals are steady, he just needs to wake up, we'll see what to do with the boy later, right now we need to. Zane suddenly stopped talking once the smugglers that were lying down, have vanished. They became so focused on Izuku that the smugglers took advantage of the situation and left. Zane. Yeah, we another problem. He said while scratching his mask. Time skip. 15 minutes. Izuku started to wake as his eyesight was improving, until he saw the five ninjas looking at him with faces of worriedly. Cole. Hey look, he's waking up. Hey kid. Are you alright? Do you remember who you are? Zane. Do you know where you live and who you live with? Kai. How many fingers am I holding? Kai showed his five fingers to see if Izuku was thinking straight. Nia. Do you know where you are? Jay. Do you prefer comics or movies? Day's question made everyone including Izuku looked at him like really. Once Izuku came to his senses again, he dragged himself away from them a little. Cole. Hey, calm down kid. We don't mean you any harm. Hi. Not unless you give us a reason to. His comment made Izuku shiver a bit. Nia. Knock it off Kai. Zane. Nia is correct Kai, you're not helping. Zane gave Kai a little elbow on his arm. Hi. Relax, I was just kidding. Haha, <laughs> you should see your face kid. He said while chuckling a bit. Seeing that they didn't do anything bad to him, and seeing how they're just trying to calm him down, Izuku slowly starts to get up. Izuku. W who are you people? Cole. Well kid, we're ninja. Izuku. Hold on, so you're all basically ninjas. He said while well thinking about what he just heard. Zane. You are correct, but I prefer just ninja. Hi. We have bigger problems to worry about right now, and the kid is one of them. He said while pointing at Izuku. Izuku. WW what do you mean? Izuku recoiled a bit after Kai pointed at him. Cole walked towards him and placed his hand on Izuku's left shoulder. Cole. What's your name kid? Izuku. Izuku, Izuku M. Midoriya. Cole. Okay, Midoriya. I want you to do us a favor and try to forget everything you saw and heard here. Don't tell anyone about this or us. Don't get involved in this or involve the police or the heroes in this. This is our problem and we'll deal with it. Alright. Izuku nodded okay good. Well take care, Izuku Midoriya Cole patted the boy's shoulder and turned to his friends, let's go ninja. After saying that, the five ninja jumped and climbed the building until they reached the top. Jay, Zane, and Ni already left, Cole and Kai had one last look at Izuku before leaving, with Kai giving a longer look. Izuku. What is going on today? Back with the ninja, they were jumping from building to building while sneaking in the shadows, until they reached an abandoned seaport where no one was around, and jumped on an old pirate ship. Cole. Master Wu, we're here. He said as he bowed to his master. He isn't an old man, with a beard as long as his whole upper level, but very skilled and strong. He wears a straw hat, a white kimono, and was welding a staff. His name was Wu. Wu. Oh, you're back. He said while getting up, how was it? Did you get anything? Zane. Unfortunately not that much. The only thing we found out is that, the overlord came here because he has made an alliance here. From God out them, their group call themselves. The League of Villains. What are their intentions? We still do not know. 
I'll be able to research them on my database and to find their location. Nia. I'll help Zane with finding their location. Hi. Once we find them, they're going to get Kaid. We'll show this league our ninja power. Woo. Kai, we don't know what the Overlord's plan is or what this League of Villains is capable of. Remember, we're not in Ninjago anymore, so things will be more difficult for you than before. The same goes to all of you. We must have patience. Hi. Yes, Sensei. He said as he bowed. Jay. Well, I'm gonna play some video games. While Jay went to the corridors to play some video games, Kai went to the lower deck to train. Zane. I will go over to the computer and check my database on this league and find their location of the Crystal Council, since I put a tracker on the truck. Nia would you like to help me? Cole Wu. Nice excellent Zane. Nia. Of course I'll help. Zane and Nia walked to the computer, and Cole went to the kitchen to make himself something to eat. Wu decided to ask his students a question. Wu. Oh, also have you been spotted? Wu's question made the five ninjas stiffen. Kai heard this and made him miss a punch on the punching bag, Jay wasn't even listening or didn't care what he heard when the sound of a console was starting, Zan and Nia were shaking, and Cole swallowed hard. Wu saw their reactions and sighed. Wu. So you've been spotted. He said while lowering his head and shaking it. Cole Kai Zan Jania. Sorry, master. They said as they bowed in front of their master. Which made Wu sigh even more. Wu. You have to pay more attention to your surroundings. Did you at least get a name? Back with Izuku. Izuku was now in front of his apartment. He still couldn't believe what he saw and heard. After the ninja left, Izuku left the alley as fast as he could. Once opening the door, he was welcomed by his mother. Izuku. Hey mom, I'm home. Binko. Oh, hi honey. How was school? Binko's both a beautiful woman and a wonderful mother. Even after Hisashi's death and having a quirkless child, Inko still took care of herself and loved her son with all her heart. Even though she had doubts on her son's dream. Inko. Are you okay Izuku? She said seeing that her son was distracted by something and was worried that something happened to him. Izuku. Yeah, I'm already. I just need a shower. Inko. I wonder what happened. Upon entering the bathroom, Izuku leaned on the wall. Today was crazy. He had so many questions he wanted to ask the ninja. Who were they? Why were they in ninja clothing? Who is the League of Villains? If they weren't quirks, then what was it? But the main question on his mind was. Izuku. Will I ever see them again? It was the next morning in Musatafu, Japan. Izuku had just woken up, still thinking about what happened yesterday. He had so many more questions than before. Even though he tried to forget everything single bit, as the black clothed ninja said. There was no way to forget something like that. Izuku. How am I going to forget everything I saw and heard yesterday? What on earth is going on? He thought as he got up from bed is it really possible for someone to not have a quirk, but still have powers? How did they get those powers? If they're trying to help by fighting those people, then why don't they ask the heroes? Who is the League of Villains, who's the Crystal Council, and who is the Overlord? He thought as he entered the bathroom to do his cough important cough business. And to shower, brush his teeth. At this point, Izuku's brain was racing. He's a person that is fascinated by all types of quirks and is also an analyst. But he's also a very worried person, and after seeing these people in his hometown who don't have any heroes that don't know this to help only worried him even more. He had to do something. Izuku wanted to help. Izuku wanted answers. But he was too afraid of what would happen if he spoke. Well, the boy's head was sweating at this point. But he had more important things to focus with right now, such as training with All Might. Of course, Izuku would have to put up with at least one more day at that goddamn school. Right now, the important thing is to stay strong and achieve his dream. After he finished showering, Izuku went to the kitchen only to see his mother making breakfast. Izuku. Morning mom. Inko. Oh, good morning sweetie, here have a seat, breakfast is almost ready. As Izuku sat on the table, he was still thinking about his thoughts. On the outside, he was just staring into space, but on the inside, he was still processing what happened yesterday. Izuku so quiet that Inko found it strange herself. Inko. Izuku, are you alright? Izuku. Huh. Inko. It's just, ever since you came back from school yesterday, you've been acting a bit weirder than usual. Izuku. Hehehe, he he, you have no idea mom. Inko. Is something bothering you Izuku? You know you talked to me about it. She said while serving breakfast, which was steamed rice and grilled fish. Izuku. Should I tell her? No 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 I shouldn't. I don't want to make her worried and get her involved into something that she has nothing to do with. He thought as stared at his breakfast, and then his mother. Inko. Izuku. Izuku. I it's nothing mom. It's just something silly, no big deal. He said as he ate a piece of fish. 
Inko. Are you sure? Inko gave a that only mothers are capable of, which made Izuku give it away a bit. Izuku. It's just. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in your life? Inko. Hmm, I don't know, what about you? Izuku. Well like. People in strange clothing. As if they have combat equipment. And possibly, they can speak our language in another. As Izuku was describing it, Inko was thinking with both an imaginary cloud on her head and a hand on her chin, trying to put together what her son was talking about. Until. Inko. Like a thug. That was her conclusion. Izuku. No mom, like a ninja. Inko. A ninja. Why a ninja? Izuku. It's just that. Izuku knew this conversation wasn't going to get anywhere, not unless he told the truth, which of course he didn't want to, it's nothing. I just watched some Amerison movie a few days back, I was just thinking about it. Haha. <laughs> Izuku was hoping that his mother would believe him. He didn't like to lie to his mother, but he didn't want to worry her, let alone get involved in something that could be extremely dangerous. But to his relief, she believed it. Inko. Oh, I see. That movie must have been pretty weird to make you think about it. She said while chuckling a bit. Izuku. Yeah. It's also dad's fault, he really liked those movies. He said smiling as he remembers the good times when they spent most of the time watching movies, most of the time, it was Hisashi that chose them. Inko. Haha, <laughs> good times, huh? She said with a sincere smile. Izuku. Yeah. Good times. He said while looking at the empty chair next to them. But also had a small smile remembering them. The day was another day of training. Another day to get stronger and achieving his dream of being a hero. However, as he was eating his breakfast, he had another thought in his mind. Izuku looked at the window and thought. Izuku. I wonder what they're doing right now. It's time for training and. We're getting started. It shows Izuku leaving UA and getting a text on his phone. When the boy looks at the message, he smiles. The scene switches to Izuku on top of the building where he discovered All Might's secret. It's on you know. Izuku then turns around and sees them, his new friends and considerate family, the ninja smiling at him. And we want to see them whip and shout it. We rock. We roll. The scene shows Izuku putting on a ninja outfit while joining the ninja. We say go slow. And everything just stands so still. Once Izuku finishes dressing up, he joins the ninja as they face some villains. We say go go. You're gonna see us rip into it just. Izuku and the ninja then charge to fight the villains. Jump up kick back whip around and spin. Then we'll jump back to it again. Ninja go. Ninja go. As Izuku and the ninja charge against the villains, he jumps as he kicks one's head, once he's done, he whips around to dodge an enemy attack, he then grabs the villain and does spinjitsu. Come on. Come on. And do the weekend whip. It then shows Izuku and the ninja doing spinjitsu all at once. The scene then changes to the League of Villains, and the Crystal Council united with Shigaraki and the Overlord. They say no no. We don't want to sit around no more. It shows Izuku and the ninja defeating the villains and jump on a building to not be seen. We say go go. They're gonna see us rip into it just. They return to the bounty only to see Master Wu smiling at them. Jump up, kick back, whip around and spin. Then we'll jump back to it again. Izuku and the ninja were training until the next turn black. Then we'll jump back to it again. Ninja go. Ninja go. The screen then blew fire as Kai appeared raising his sword, then looked at the readers while doing spinjitsu, once he finished his mask was removed with a name next to him spelling out Kai. Come on, come on. We're gonna do it again. The scene then changes to blue as Jay appeared as he pulled out his nunchucks then doing spinjitsu, when he finished his mask came off with the name Jay, also appearing next to him. We just jump up, kick back, whip around and spin. Then we'll jump back to it again. The scene then goes all white with ice appearing with Zane jumping while spinning his shurikens, then do spinjitsu. Once he's done, his mask comes off, showing his robotic face with the name Zane showing up next to him. Ninja go. Ninja go. Come on, come on. And do the weekend whip. The scene then turns grayish black as Cole jumps down while slamming his hammer, causing the floor to crack, and does spinjitsu. As soon as he finishes, his mask comes off with the name Cole appearing. Ninja go. Ninja go. The scene goes blue again, this time Nia appears as she swings her trident before doing spinjitsu, when she finishes, her mask comes off with the name Nia appearing. Come on, come on, come on. The scene goes white again, with Wu twirling around with his staff a bit before he pointed his staff to the readers, with the name Sensei Wu, appearing in front of him. And do the weekend whip. The scene then goes green with Izuku in his ninja outfit, while performing his elemental power, then does spinjitsu, when he finishes his mask comes off with the name Izuku appearing. Jump up, kick back, whip around and spin. 
The scene goes blue for the last time with Izuku, the ninja, and Wu looking at the readers with smiles on their faces. Sensei Wu. Episode 1. Reunion and questions answered. End of opening. After another day at Eldera, Izuku was walking to Dagoba Beach to train. For him, staying at Eldera was horrible. He had no friends and no one to talk to. Even the teachers and staff didn't care about him. This was because of one of two reasons. 1. Because he's quirkless. 2. Itsuki Bakugo, because of his power, which is powerful, he was always praised, because of this, it inflated his ego very much. Izuku had thought about trying to regain his friendship with him, but it was no use. Bakugo had always acted in a cocky, aggressive way with Izuku, and the boy couldn't do anything. Speaking of Bakugo, Izuku noticed that he's been more quieter and didn't bother him, ever since he saved him from that sludge villain. He found this strange, but right now he had more important things to think about. And of them was training. Ashinori. Ah, young Midoriya. You're just in time. Ashinori Yagi, who is all might in his muscular form is all powerful, but in his normal form, he's very thin with sharp angular features and long limbs, with a long neck and a pair of missing eyebrows. Ashinori. Ready for another day of training. Izuku. Of course I am. He said with a neutral tone, All Might found this very strange, because with the six months he spent with the boy, he never acted like this. Ashinori. Young Midoriya, is something bothering you? Did something happen? Izuku? Well. Izuku? Should I tell him? It could be good, he could help. But if I tell, will they come for me? Would it end up getting All Might in trouble? I shouldn't risk it. But, it doesn't hurt to have at least a little curiosity. He thought as he put his hand on his chin and looked at Tashinori, who was also looking at him, waiting for his successor to speak. Izuku. All Might. Tashinori. Yes. Izuku. You've seen a lot of things in your days as a hero, especially when you were younger. Tashinori. Yes, I've seen, felt, and experienced many things in my life. But there are certain things I'd prefer to forget. He was talking about his time with Gran Torino as he trained him, it was sufferable to the blonde, why are you asking this question? Izuku. So. Have you ever seen people use powers that aren't considered a quirk? Tashinori. What? Izuku. Let's suppose that not one but five people have powers. But it wasn't caused by a quirk or anything else. As Izuku was talking, Tashinori found this pretty awkward. He's seen many things in his life as a hero, but this was new. Tashinori. Anything else? He asked with his hand on his chin. Izuku. Are they? Ninjas. He said with an embarrassing smile on his face. Ashinori found this very strange from his successor. Why would he ask this kind of question? What is this question? Where did he get it from? What made him ask this question? Ashinori. Look, when I was younger, I saw many things. But this is new to me. In fact, what you just said sounds like it came from a manga. Is there something you want to tell me young Midoriya? Izuku was shocked. Even All Might himself hasn't seen or known anything like this, but then again who knows but him. This only increased the curiosity of the ninja even more. Ashinori. Young Midoriya, are you alright? His call made Izuku snap from his head. Putting that aside right now, he had to make up a lie. Izuku. Oh, um. I it's just that. I watched some pretty weird American movie a few days back, and I was just wondering if something like that was possible. He. Izuku was praying that All Might would believe the lie, and to his belief. He did. Ashinori. Ah, yes. I like American movies as well. Some are really interesting and confusing. Just a couple of weeks back I saw a movie where a chimpanzee is born with some sort of medicine-like drug in its DNA, and gains human abilities, such as speaking. Ha 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 ha. That, and the sequels were awesome. Izuku. Wuyu, glad he believed it. Izuku felt relieved, until another thought appeared in his head wait a second, there's no way he's talking about the movie I'm thinking about. Ashinori. Anyway, that's enough bickering around, let's get back to training. He said while looking at the remaining garbage. There was still a lot, but not that much from six months ago. Come on, young Midoriya. Izuku. Yes, sir. Time skip. Five hours later. The bounty. As Izuku trained and trained, Tashinori saw brilliant progress in the boy's training, and saw how his physique was better than before. Izuku already all might that from time to time, he trained at home as well, which made it easier. Even though he didn't have a big body, Izuku had a great physique. With the training, as much as it hurt him, Izuku's physique was improving a lot. While Izuku was training, we returned to the bounty. Jay was playing his video games, Kai was training with some dummies, Zane and Nia were figuring out about the League of Villains, and Cole was cleaning the weapons, keeping them maintained. As for Master Wu, he was meditating. At least, that's what he was trying to do, for he was thinking what his students had said about a boy with green hair. Flashback. 
Wu was standing in front of his pupils, who were bound for forgiveness. Wu. Could any of you explain to me how you were seen? Cole. We were looking if the Crystal Council was around, and when we found it, we fought them. It wasn't that difficult, until we saw that there was a boy, who was looking at us. Zane. He even though we fought like that because of quirks. We tried to use the lie, but. Hi. Then Jay over here used his big mouth to tell the truth. Kai was looking at Jay with an angered look on his face. Jay. I already apologized. Nia. Still, that's not an excuse Jay. Cole. Relax master. I already told the kid to don't tell anyone about us or involve the police or heroes. Woo. And what makes you so sure that he won't tell anyone about us? Cole was quite. Wu was right. How was he supposed to know that the kid wouldn't talk about it to anyone, knowing that he and his friends didn't fight like that with a quirk? Cole only hoped that Izuku wouldn't say anything. Cole. I. I don't know, master. Cole's answer made Wu sigh, before he asked another question. Wu. Did you at least get the child's name? Cole. Yeah. His name was. Izuku Midoriya. When Cole said the name. Midoriya, Wu's eyes widened with shock. His students noticed the sudden behavior. Zane. Master, are you alright? Wu. Why yes my pupils. I I just. Re-remember something. You can go now. Jay. Wait, really? No punishment or anything like that. Jay then received a elbow from Kai to shut him up. Wu. No. No punishment. The students were surprised of their master's answer, this wasn't what they were expecting unless. He said while throwing a stern look. I J Zane Cole Nia. No need master. They said as they ran. Wu then dropped to his knees to meditate, but his head wouldn't allow it. He was thinking about the name of the boy. His last name specifically. He recognized that name and hasn't heard of it in years. Wu. Could it really be? Hisashi's here. My students have met your son. He, what a coincidence, how are you, old friend? He thought while looking at a desk with a few pictures. One of them is with him and his pupils. Another is of Wu and his brother and his sister-in-law, while the remaining ones were with someone he hasn't seen in years. And the other is from Wu and Hisashi when they were younger. Then to flashback. Wu was so in thought about yesterday, that he didn't notice Cole approaching in front of him. Cole. Is everything alright, master? Wu. What, oh, of course, I'm fine Cole. I'm just. Thinking about yesterday. Cole. Oh, right. Look, master. I promise nothing like this will happen again, and I apologize for what happened. He said while bowing for forgiveness. Wu. It's okay, Cole. Just try not to get caught again. Cole. Of course, master. He said as he walked his Zane and Nia. Wu sat still as he was thinking about Izuku and Hisashi. Wu. Will I ever see you again, old friend? Zane and Nia were using the computer with Nia's face filled with a little annoyance. Cole. Hey guys, you got anything yet? Zane. So far, we haven't been able to find anything about this League of Villains, and the tracker I put on is getting an interference signal. Cole. Did you try to fix it? Nia. Yeah, we've tried. But it isn't working in any way. She said annoyingly. It's like this signal isn't coming from a device, antenna, or anything like it. The only thing to do now, is to go out and try to get more information. Also, to not be seen this time. Cole. Right. Kai, Jay. I stopped training to look at Cole, Jay was so zoned in his game, that Kai had to wake him up and point at Cole, which made Jay pause his game. Cole. Get your stuff. We're going out again. Back to Izuku. Izuku was just walking in the streets. When he finished his training for the day, he stayed a bit more. As much as All Might tells him to not exaggerate, as it will end up harming the boy and needing rest. The afternoon was quiet and peaceful, the sun about to set as it reflects on the ocean floor. But to Izuku's demise, he saw a truck moving that was heading towards a place that wasn't that busy. A part of him told him to put it aside, the other part to go and investigate. He just needed to be sure. Izuku. Ugh, damn it Izuku. He ran where the truck was going, without him knowing, about five people were jumping from buildings to the same direction as Izuku. Izuku approached to where the truck stopped, and hid. He saw the driver get out of the truck, and Izuku recognized the person, it was the thugs from yesterday. The thug went to the back of the vehicle and opened the cargo, causing more thugs to come out. Izuku. It's them. What are you doing this time? He saw one of the smugglers walk to the garage door and open it. Inside there were some boxes that were quite heavy with a guy who was. Green. Smuggler. Did you bring what we asked for? Yeah, it's there. If you want, you're welcome to check it out. But first, my end of the bargain. The person spoke with a voice sounding a bit off. One of the smugglers carried a box to the man and opened it. 
It appeared to be some sort of armor. Once the guy gave his signal to the smugglers, they went to one of the boxes in the truck and opened it. They were more of those blocks with the yellow cracks. The smuggler who was checking it out gave a signal that everything's here to the others. Smuggler. Pleasure doing business with you. You know what they say. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And soon, I'll have even more friends. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Smuggler. Take care, and also none of us know where to find you. As they were talking, the other smugglers were picking up and placing the boxes on the truck. The gate then closes. Exactly. Izuku wanted to do something to stop them, but didn't know what to do. These suspicious and mysterious people are in his town and feared that something bad will happen. Once he'll get out of there, he decided to tell the police and the heroes. But first, he needed proof. He took out his phone to take some pictures or a video, that is, until he felt someone behind him. Izuku turned around and saw one of the smugglers staring at him menacingly before kicking him and dragging him toward the others. Smuggler 2. Look who I found. I saw spying on us, I think he was recording to alert the police and the heroes. Izuku saw the smugglers all staring at him, this was worse when he got stares from school, for the fact that these people can kill him immediately if they wanted to. Broki smuggler. Wait a minute. Izuku looked to see the smuggler from last night. Broki smuggler. That's the kid from yesterday, where me and the others were ambushed by the ninja. If he's here, then they're here as well. This made everyone look at the scared boy. He is now an enemy. Smuggler 1. So, you're with those ninja. Izuku. And no, I, I don't even know who they are. Smuggler 2. Oh really, then why do you have your phone out apart from taking pictures or videos of us? Izuku. W well. Although he was afraid, Izuku put that fear aside. If he wants to be a hero, he needs to put fear aside and face the evil in front of him. Izuku. It's because I won't let you do anything bad in this city or anywhere in Japan, and I won't let you get away with this. Izuku now with a fearless look surprised the smugglers, but also ineffective. Smuggler 2. Heh, real cute kid. He pushed the boy to the ground, making him fall. The smuggler was about to stomp on Izuku, until he grabbed his foot and pushed it back, making the smuggler fall this time. Izuku was about pounce on him until the other smugglers ambushed Izuku, grabbing his arms, while the others started to beat Izuku in the face and his stomach. The boy tried to fight back, but there was no other way. After getting beaten up for a good minute or two, Izuku fell to the ground as they released him. His upper body was heavily bruised. The rookie then took out his knife to finish the boy. Rookie smuggler? You should have minded your own business kid. He raised his knife to slash the boy until his leg was hit by a glacier of ice. He groaned in pain as the ice fully covered his leg. The smugglers were looking around for whoever did that, until... J. Ninja Go. They landed onto the smugglers, knocking him out. He then ran towards another, who tried to attack the blue ninja by throwing his chain at him. The chain wrapped around Jay's arm making him vulnerable, but quickly used spinjitsu to drag the smuggler inside, once he finished the smuggler was all tied up in his own chain. Hi. Hey there. The smuggler turned around, only to be grabbed by the collar and being thrown to the other three ninja. Zane jumped in front of one of the smugglers that were heading to Kai and froze him. Once he was frozen, Nia gave the finishing blow with a kick to the head, breaking the ice and knocking him out. Izuku, who was still on the ground, watched with awe as the ninja sprung into action, but his vision was starting to dim a little. Before he closed his eyes, he saw the black ninja walk to him and carry him with both arms, Izuku heard him yelling at his brothers and sister to go. Izuku's eyes then came to a close. A few hours later, Izuku started to wake up and finds out that he's somewhere else. He wasn't in a hospital, he wasn't home. He started to get up and check his surroundings, it appears he was in a bedroom. The room had a couple of pictures on the wall, and there were about six beds all color-coded. Izuku. Where am I, what happened? Izuku put his hand on his head trying to remember what happened, until the memory of the smugglers beating him popped up in his brain. The boy looks at his upper body and finds no bruises, no blood on him, no nothing. Another thing, he didn't feel any pain. It was like if he never gotten punched or kicked in the first place. Izuku sits on the bed he was laying on, until the door suddenly opened. J. Oh, you're awake. How you're feeling bud? Izuku. I. I feel good. Thank you. J. Oh, you don't have to thank me for anything kid. Master Wu took really good care of you. I thought it was a bit weird at first, but also nice of him. As for me, I offered to let you sleep in our room. He said while waving his arms to introduce the room. Izuku. T thank you for the hospitality and, I'm sorry for being in your way. Mr. Ninja. He said as he stood up and bowed. Izuku had just noticed that the blue ninja's mask was off. He saw that the blue ninja had brown curly hair and also had a couple of freckles, just like him. J. Hey, don't worry about it. 
Also, my name is Jay Walker, but you can call me Jay. He said while smiling, until the door opened again. Zane. He's woken up. Good. How are you feeling? Izuku was flabbergasted by what he's seeing. The white ninja's mask was also off. His face including his hair, was all sliver. His eyes were cyan blue with a glow. Izuku. I um. I I I'm fine. Um, how long has it been? Zane. It has been about 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 40 seconds. When he said the time, Izuku panicked. Izuku. Oh crap. My mom. I got to call her to let her know I'm fine. Izuku looked in his pockets, but it wasn't there, which only increased his fear, oh no. Zane. It is alright. Your phone was damaged, but I fixed it. Come, let me show it to you. He said while gesturing Izuku to follow him. Izuku follows them upstairs, and he sees a light to the outside in front of him. Once he's outside, he starts looking around the place, it was pretty fascinating. But something felt a bit off. Hi. Boo. Izuku screams and looks behind him to see Kai laughing at him. Hi. Hahaha. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. He said while catching his breath, I see you're better now. Izuku. Why yeah. He looks to see Kai's face with his hair all spiky and all over the place, as if he just woke up from bed. Hi. Hey, easy there kid. It was just a prank that's all, trust me I'm all cool. He said as Nia walks over. Nia. Leave him alone Kai. She said as she walked to Izuku, once you get to know him, he's nothing but big soft teddy bear. Izuku analyzed that she had a mole on her right cheek, and her hair was in a ponytail. Hi. I am not. Nia. Oh, really? You were like so overprotective of me. Like, so overprotective. Hi. It's because I have a sacred duty as the older brother, and it is my responsibility to take care of you and keep you safe. Nia. I can take care of myself, Kai. Both Nia and Kai started to bicker around. Izuku couldn't believe what he was seeing. Who knew that highly skilled and trained ninja would fight or bicker like siblings do? Zane. Don't worry about them, they can get like that at times. Zane approached Izuku with his fixed phone, here it is. Izuku. Thank you. Izuku turned on his phone and started to call his mom until he found the contacts. He waited for his mother to answer, until. Inko. Izuku, is that you? She yelled through the phone, causing Izuku's ear to ring a bit. Izuku. Yeah, it's me mom. I'm sorry for worrying you and I'm alright. Inko. Sigh, what matters now is that you're alright honey. Anyway, where are you? Izuku. I'm. Izuku thought of what to say to his mother, until he looked at the ninja and had an idea. I'm at a friend's place which I made a while back. Inko. A friend. Why didn't you tell me about them? Izuku. Oh. Must have slipped my mind. He. Inko. Are these friends nice at least? Izuku. Well, they're pretty wacky. Izuku was looking where the four ninja were and saw Kai and Nia still bickering, while Jay and Zane tried calm them down, but also pretty cool at the same time. A comical bead of sweat falling from his head. Inko. That's good. But please Izuku, let me know next time. You know how worried I can be. Izuku. Okay, mom. It won't happen again, that's a promise. I'll be home soon, okay. Inko. Okay, sweetie. Take care. Izuku. Okay, mom. Bye. Izuku hung up the call and turned to the four ninja. I and Nia were still going at it, while Jay and Zane were trying to calm them down. Izuku was thinking of a way to stop fighting, until. I, Nia. Izuku suddenly heard a voice behind him. He turns around and sees Cole and Wu looking at Kai and Nia's direction. Wu. That's enough. Kai and Nia stop fighting, while Jay and Zane let go of them, while being afraid of the look Wu was giving them. Hi Nia. Sorry, master. They said as they bowed. Wu. I apologize for their behavior. They're like this at times. Wu looked at Izuku, who was surprised to see the old man. Izuku. I it's okay. It really didn't bother me that much. Wu noticed Izuku's behavior. His students have already told him that the boy knows they didn't fight like that because of a quirk. Wu. So, you are Izuku Midoriya, correct? Izuku. Why yes, sir. Wu. I know you must have questions on your mind right now. You may want to sit. Wu signaled Izuku to sit down on the floor. Izuku felt that the old man was trustworthy. As long as he didn't offend them in any way. Wu. First, let me be the first to welcome you, to, the destiny's bounty. Izuku had now noticed that he wasn't just standing at a home, but also an actual pirate ship. The ship's color was all red, the sails had a red paint as if they were dragon wings, and in the front of the ship, there was the face of a carved wooden dragon. Izuku was beyond shocked of this, but Wu continued talking. Izuku. Wait, if those five fought like that without a quirk, can you fight like that too? Wu. 
Of course, like I say, I am old, not weak. You see. Long before time had a name, the first Spinjitsu master created Ninjago, using for elemental weapons. The scythe of quakes, the nunchucks of lightning, the shurikens of eyes, and the sword of fire. But when he passed, his two sons swore to protect them with their lives, but the oldest was corrupted by evil, and sought out collect them all, Lord Garmadon. So I, Sensei Wu, his brother sought out to find four ninja to collect them first. Those ninja being the same ones you met. One. Bazuku. Wait, if there were four weapons, how come there's five ninja? Nia. You see, a few months after we found the weapons, I discovered that I myself had powers. Bazuku. Oh, so what happened next? Wu. Well, after we had found the weapons, these four. He said sternly while looking at the boys, they discovered the prophecy. Bazuku. The prophecy, prophecy of what? Wu. The prophecy of, the green ninja. Bazuku. The green ninja. Wu. One ninja, will rise above the others, and become, the green ninja, the ninja destined, to defeat the dark lord. Bazuku. Dark lord, as in Garmadon. Wu. That's what we thought at first, but it was a very darker lord than Garmadon. Bazuku. Who? Wu. Let's just say, where there is light, there will always, be shadow. The living embodiment of evil itself, known as, the overlord. Bazuku was shocked by what he just heard, this was something that will be in his brain forever. Bazuku. So, how did the ninja fight like that without quirks? Wu. Unlike quirks, the ninja possess elemental powers and the lost martial arts techniques known as Spinjitsu. Now, Izuku was increasingly wanting more answers. Wu saw that Izuku was now interested, so he continued. Wu. We have defeated the overlord before, but unfortunately, he came back again. The second time we defeated him, it cost us the loss of Zane. Now, he's come back, but this time as the Crystal King, and with organization called the Crystal Council, they seem to have struck a deal with the League of Villains, which is why we came here. Wu then gave a signal to his students to properly introduce themselves. Cole. The name's Cole Brookstone, but you can call me Cole. Izuku saw that he had black bushy hair, with really bushy eyebrows. Hi. I'm Kai Smith, you can call me Kai. Zane. My name is Zane Julian, Nindrite at your service. Jay. I'll just remind you again if you forgot, but I'm Jay. Nia. I'm Kai's little sister, Nia. Izuku. Wait, if you're from this Ninjago, what'll happen if there's trouble? Jay. We have lots of friends in Ninjago, they're looking after the city while we're away. Izuku. So, how did you guys find out? Jay made mocking face as he stared at Kai. Jay. Because of Kai's girlfriend here. Kai turned his head away while blushing a bit. Hi. Ugh, just stop. Woo. Whatever the overlord's intentions here are, they aren't good. Izuku was both afraid and worried about the situation. Not only his city, but the country of Japan has a group of villains that the heroes are unaware of. Izuku. Why not ask the heroes for help? They can help. Right. Cole. That's what I told you kid, this is our problem. Besides, we can't expose our secrets. Just imagine how everyone will react when that there are five ninja who have powers that aren't quirks. The computer then made a sound. Zane and Neurons to the computer. Zane. Guys, the tracker I put, it's working again. Cole. Where is it? Nia. From what we're seeing, it's on the move in the streets. If we hurry, we can stop them. Cole. Right. Everyone, grab your weapons and move out. Izuku watched as the ninja got their weapons. He wanted to do something, until an idea popped in his head. Izuku. Wait. The yell made the ninja stop to look at him, I, I want to help. Cole. I told you already kid, this is our problem, and it's too dangerous. Izuku. No no no, I can't just sit still knowing that there are these. Villains in my city and I'm doing nothing. Izuku's sudden snap stunned the ninja and surprisingly, Wu. Izuku. Look, I promise that I won't get in the way and won't tell anyone about you or the council. I'll hide your secret as much as I can. You have friends in Ninjago right, allow me to be your first friend here in Yusatafu. What kind of hero would I be knowing that there are people here who need help and that there's a threat in the country? Cole. What do you mean? Izuku. You see, my dream is to be a hero. A hero who always saves someone with a smile. I want to be a hero that faces evil head on. I refuse to pretend that there's nothing wrong in my town when I know there is, and that no hero knows and isn't fighting. So please, let me help you. The ninja were speechless. They saw a determined fire in the boy's eyes. Izuku really wanted to help them. The five of them thought about, but before anyone could say anything. Wu. Of course we let you help. Everyone looked at Wu in both surprise and shock. Wu. You know Izuku, you remind me a lot of your father. Izuku. You. You knew my father? Wu. Yes. 
He helped me when times were tough in Ninjago, that is until he moved. How is he? Izuku. He um. HH passed away. Wu was both surprised and saddened to hear that one of his old friends had died. He really saw a little bit of his sashi in him and a bit of someone else. He found himself taking care of Izuku, teaching him the way of the ninja, teach him spinjitsu. To make it up for everything his sashi had done for him and Ninjago. Wu. I am sorry. Izuku. It's alright. The important now is that he wanted me to achieve my dream and for me to always be strong and to always endure. Also to help those who need help. It's what a hero does. He said with a smile. Wu was impressed with the boy. Wu. You remind me of someone else I knew. Izuku. Really, who? Wu. His name. Was Lloyd. The ninja were to stunt to speak. Did they just hear their master say that this boy reminded him of Lloyd? The most affected was Kai. Izuku. Who's Lloyd? Wu. He was the green ninja, it was because of him the overlord was first defeated. Izuku. Whoa, how did he defeat the overlord? Wu. By unlocking his true potential, because of this, he became the ultimate spinjitsu master. Izuku. Ultimate spinjitsu master. Wu. The power of creation, the power of the first spinjitsu master himself. I can see it inside you, you too will unlock your full potential one day. Wu turned to his students. Wu. Ninja, let Izuku help you. And teach him everything that I have taught you. Cole. Hey, are you sure, master? Wu. Yes. I'm grateful for what Hisashi has done for me, it is now to repay my debt. He said while looking at Izuku with smile. The boy was surprised but also happy. He was happy to know that he will help and train like an actual ninja. Izuku. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Wu. He said while bowing. Wu. Call me, Master Wu. Izuku. Yes sir. Hi. So what are we waiting for, we have a truck to catch. He said as he just finished zoning out. Cole. Right. So what do you say kid, want to help us out? Izuku. Let's do this. Izuku ran to the ninja. They had a truck to catch. This is the beginning of a beautiful new friendship and a beautiful new life. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. Part 1 is over. See you in the next part.